Generic greetings and welcome to Timberborn and a new series. Today's beverage is a nice traditional cup of tea, the perfect beverage for controlling a colony of beavers and building dams, which is fairly handy because that's what you'll be doing in the game. It's essentially a colony survival game where you do your typical stuff like gathering, building, researching, etc. and obviously farming to, you know, get food and not die. But uh, you've also got the added twist that you have a wet and a dry season. In the wet season you have lakes and rivers and water flow where you'll have to control it and alter the flow with dams, weirs, and that sort of thing and the typical engineering on that side of it but also when the dry season comes you need to store this water and have it in well, various uh, forms to basically survive the entire seasons. So that's the added little twist. I have played this in the past when it was a free beta and quite enjoyed it and had displayed it on the channel and this is now the publicly available early access release. So as always, links in the description if you want to check it out yourself. I've only played about an hour and a half, maybe two hours of this build, so not an expert, but I've enjoyed what I've played. So anyway, with that said and done, let's jump in and we will go through and, well, see how long we get through. As always, as long as the journey's interesting, I'm not really too concerned about the destination, but Hopefully, we'll get to, you know, a nice little uh, self-sufficient colony, etc. And not die of dehydration. Anyway, a new game, and you select your faction. There's only two factions in the game at the time of recording. Forktails and the Iron Teeth. I'm just going to go with the Forktails because, well, I haven't actually unlocked the Iron Teeth. You need to get uh, eight uh, average well-beings, and I've got seven in a previous one. So I could have went for that one, but I like the idea of these guys. They were easygoing but hardworking. Forktails are expert farmers. They respect nature, and it rewards them with plentiful bounties, uh, whereas these guys are the other way, they're all about tech and machinery and such. I think it's set in a world where essentially um, there's been a, a cataclysmic or apocalyptic event where humans are extinct and beavers have inherited the land, so just uh, one of the possible futures for your species. Anyway, let's go over to next here and we have to select our map. They are not randomly generated, but you can create it. There is a map editor that I've messed around with, but I'm just going to go with one of the ones in here. Now, they range from 256, sorry, they range from 50 up to 256 to 256, and I'm going to actually go with Waterfalls, which is 128 of 128. Now, I know a lot of people immediately have a knee-jerk reaction and say, oh, you need to go on the biggest map possible. And I understand where you're coming from on that one. Uh, normal difficulty, by the way. We're not going to bother with any of the other ones there. Just normal difficulty, average, fairly chill, but with enough challenge to keep us interested. Uh, yeah, the thing about the game is, although we have a, only a half-size map, in, well, from the maximum size, this is the one I've picked very vertical, and that's something to take into account. So when I load in... We'll have a quick look around to see what it's uh, like. So you can see this is our main lodge here. Is it actually called a lodge? It's not. It's called a district. Ah, I should have called it a lodge. Anyway, quick rundown on the UI. Top left, we have our population, so split into children and adults. We have whether they have a home or are homeless. Well... We currently got no homes. We have our um, buildings as well. Also resources like wood and stone and berries and food and all that goes on the top left there. On the right hand side, uh, so is our cycle. So cycle one, day one, as well as uh, the forecast. Currently it's unknown, so it's not going to be dry. Time controls, etc. over there as well. And then on the bottom, all of the buttons for building, which we'll get to. So this is our main area. You can see we have this sort of uh, bit here, which is all sort of cracked and brown and basically like dead earth and that's what it is, it's got no water so you can't grow anything on here, you can walk on it and survive on it but you can't grow anything so all these trees are dead it says they look dried out and died but when we get closer to the water source here you can see it's now fertile and green and then all of these trees are nice and healthy and alive same for the berries and that sort of thing and it's obviously split into different tiers you've also got these ruins of human civilization which are yeah just sort of um the boneyard type skeletal uh, <laughs> structures there and obviously we can follow the water so we're going to go up here and follow it to its source so there is the water source there, ground only, must be built on the ground. And it flows down, drops on a nice bit of waterfall there, another waterfall there, and obviously continues down and then along. So naturally, we want, we want to think about damming it, so when the dry season comes this doesn't just evaporate because once that happens all of this will become uh, like a barren land and things start dying off you've also got little bits like this barrier uh, which we can remove and water will flow down here we'll get onto that later on and sections here which we probably will be able to flood eventually like maybe blow a hole in here with some dynamite and then flood all of this so that's what i'm saying it's not the biggest map possible but it is good because it's quite vertical so that's a nice little interesting challenge either way what every new settlement needs are logs build lumberjack flags and mark some trees in its range for cutting 
counting. All buildings used by beavers must be connected to a district centre with a path, so connect them well. So over to our pathing here, paths and structures, and then to pathing. And I'm just going to run a path right across to the right-hand side. I'm then going to go ahead and go for some wood and to a lumberjack flag and then place it in, I think, probably there. And it shows you the the range of that so that's now uh, put in i'm just going to unpause the game so we get some beavers to go and build that actually yeah you do need to build it you can see there's the beavers coming along there uh this is uh uh i think Recrudil, something like that we've got all different ones here uh ankle glads and uh should haggis i think <laughs> anyway let's go over to cut trees and we're going to mark as tree cutting and then mark all of these trees to be cut down we're going to do a similar thing on this side but with berries but i'll get that in but a moment oh you need to build another lumberjack flag so actually it's already anticipating what we probably need to do here i'm just going to run that across and then over to this you can see there's some steps up there because i want to place the lumberjack flag as far away as i probably can um, if I place it there, it does actually allow me to go further up, which is fine. So there is sufficient. And then we'll go back over to cut trees. These are like your orders, essentially. What I think is a smart decision. You can see I'm trying to get all of these trees, but it doesn't allow me to. That's because it's split into the different like stratas and tiers of the land. So I think that is a... Uh quite a nice little handy feature there and then we just cut those trees cut those trees and there's that pretty much done so obviously the beavers are going to go to here and they're going to go om nom nom as they do and then they're going to fell the logs and then bring them back to the lumberjack flag and that means that uh, we can continue there. So now we need to keep our beavers alive. Well, that would be handy, yes. Build a water pump on a riverbank to secure a steady supply of water. You should also place a gatherer flag to gather berries from nearby bushes. So over to food, to a gatherer flag. And at the moment, the only source of berries, and in fact, the only source of food, is down here. So I need to place this probably in there. And that will allow us to collect those berries. Once again, we're going to go to plant crops. Uh, oh, no, plant, not plant crops. You want to gather the berries. Um, actually, will they automatically do that? That's a good question. Will they automatically do that within range? Mm, I think they will. Anyway. Let's go ahead and also go to our pathing and I want to build a path down and think about where we're going to put our water pump. So we'll have a water pump probably along this area, but I'm going to see where it is first. So there's a water pump and I have to obviously rotate it so that the end is in the water there. Oh, it's a bit of a shame that I couldn't have made it the other way. So I would have been at place it like that. Uh, if only the water pump was flipped around. Can we change that? Uh, we can't. That's a bit of a shame. No dramas, though. No dramas. Let me just place it in here. Um, probably. Probably there is, is sufficient. And then you do have to connect everything up with the uh, the pathing there. So that's now connected. Um, looks like we have our gatherer flag. Who? Uh, yeah, we've got now someone working there. This is uh, this is Tyrezai. Tyrezai, and they are gathering all of the nice berries. Don't know what type of berries they are. Um, blue ones apparently. So you know blueberries good uh, the water pump is being built you can change the priority of things if you do so desire obviously if everything's at high priority nothing's at high priority but <laughs> we've got this set to normal because we've got unemployed beavers anyway so they're just going to do that sort of thing what i am going to do is probably remove this here and it'll fill all of this with water which means this will become fertile and the main takeaway is that yes i will then be able to farm it and that's something we need to do sooner rather than later but there you are um, we can see they are carrying the logs there. They're a little bit slow because they're carrying that. Each of the beavers has various um, traits that they need to fulfill, or various needs, should I say. So hunger, thirst, sleep, and then you've got like social life. These stars, when you've got these, that like I say unlocks the uh, different faction. I'm interested to see what other factions we're going to get in the game, but with it being an early access, who knows? The main thing is that it's all about the sort of well it, it's mainly about the, the water and, and the flow of that so there's other maps where it sort of splits and meanders and in fact one of them's called meander i think and you've got ones that go all the way around and different lakes and pools and i have seen people with make say like dams that are this high you know this absolutely huge monstrous dams and that's fun it looks fairly cool i don't know where you go from there um <laughs> <laughs> when I saw it, it was a bit like when you see people play Oxygen Not Included that they've just carved out the entire landmass um, and they're just walking along ladders and stuff. That's that's like a next level thing. Um, I, I, you know, I don't mind that at all. I like seeing it, but uh, I end up playing more more grounded with things like this where we, we are, you know, 
playing a nice colony of beavers and getting on with things rather than pretty much blocking up uh, <laughs> this entire thing with, with dams. That's a futurist problem. Anyway, we'll continue on with that one. While all of the buildings you place have some storage, they will fill up quickly. Place a log pile to store logs, a small water tank to store water, and a small warehouse to store berries and other resources. Fair enough. So over to water, over to a small water tank. And I want to place a water tank probably further back I mean he would be nice but the thing is this is all fertile land and I want to keep that as free as possible for us to um, actually even there might be a bit too close to this side uh, I'm gonna delete that for now I'm delete that for now and what I'll do is I'll place a water barrel I'm gonna place it there I think and just because I can I'm gonna place a pathing all the way around this lodge here just in case we need to connect things up I think that should be fine we also need a warehouse and a log pile so storage log pile the log pile will be I think we'll make it central like the rest of it I don't know whether that's a good idea or not but we'll have it central and then we'll also have a warehouse in here as well which I could I, mean, I could just place it here I don't think that is unreasonable I will place it maybe Maybe in there. We're having these little gaps so we can have pathings going around and such. So there we go. I'm just going to speed it up to max speed. And I think you get a 16-hour day. And you can see you can change it to the working hours. So you can say 16 hours, 17 hours. We're going to go with 16 because that's basically the day. There you are. They don't need to go and, you know, oh, there you go. Look, I, I don't know if you saw that, but there were a lot of them just sleeping on the ground. Because they've currently not got homes. So that's a bit of a shame. But we'll get that in due course. But yeah, they don't have to like fulfill loads of needs and take time off. They'll just, you know, get the needs done when when they're not working, for the most part, anyway. You can see the water pump is now there, and we've got Romavax who is working in there. So they are gathering the water, and yeah, it's it's collecting it. It's seven out of fifteen. So once that's full, we will have to store it somewhere, which naturally will be in this tank here. And there is said tank. So we have a barrel with a little spout at the bottom and what will happen oh yeah there we go we got some beavers who are going to grab some water they're actually thirsty there that's what they need that's above their heads there actually they thirst so if the need is not satisfied they will die luckily they've managed to go to there and have a little drink so yeah what's going to happen is they're going to grab some water here and they're going to bring it over to the barrel so we'll store that the log pile is now in you can obviously alter the desired amount of logs you can tell it to empty you can uh, change the like the, the, the uh, if it's allowed and things like that, and turn it on and off we're not going to micromanage that at this time maybe later on but we shall see just going to speed up to max speed while i crack on with the warehouse which is now almost done it's 75 percent built we're on 13 of 15 materials there's one of them no oh, there's a baby beaver there that's sat is x and oh there we go that's built and oh, you can see that on the top you've got like some nice little yellow flowers dandelions perhaps other flowers are available continue beavers should now survive for a while you should start thinking about building farms producing power and generating science points good luck and that is all the tutorial you get <laughs> what i'm going to do is tell that to be demolished i don't think we can get there but we shall see I do want to go ahead and build maybe one, two more water storage places. In fact, I probably want to build about six of them. But we'll get onto that in a moment. Some of these things in here, actually a lot, are hidden behind science. So you have to research them. So that, that large water tank there, that requires 120. This one requires 200 for the irrigation tower, you know, etc. So there's a lot of things you have to unlock. Um, so we'll get onto that with science points later on. You can see the beavers are sort of hanging around because they've got nowhere to go, they've got nowhere to sleep. So I'm going to remove that, see how we get on, make some farms, get some farming done, and then potentially look at potentially look at some more more pumps, I think. Um, there we go. So are they going to go over Is anyone going to go over there? It doesn't say they can't get there. Priority is high. Let's change it to high priority and see if anyone goes over there. Um, don't think they're going to get there. I don't know if they can get there. No, see that? It is not in range. So if I build the pathing, it may change that. Let me alter it. So pathing and build along to there. Has that changed the range? Oh, only just off. So we want to build it. Oh, we can actually build it around so we can do this. I think that is being done intentionally. 
Um, I can't build it there because there's a tree in the way, but that should be far enough if I check the range of that. Yes, it is. So this is now in range, which means someone should come along. There we go. They're coming along the path, and they are going to remove this barrier. This is a natural barrier blocking water. can be demolished, and it is being demolished. You can see the water here. It's uh, quite crystal clear. You can see the bottom of this, and everything's fertile. I would prefer the, the water, the, the land under here, to look a bit different, like... I know it's darker, but that's just because of the water over the top. It would be nice if it was, like, a lot darker and green and lush or something, just to differentiate it with the rest of it. But it's no drama, I guess. You can see this barrier here is all full of mud and stones and logs. And there we go. The water is now flowing. So the water is flowing down here. And more importantly, all of this is now becoming nice, fertile land. And it's going to fill up this little reservoir here. And then we'll be able to do something over here. This is probably going to be my log uh, building and probably the log uh, building area. Farming is going to go here, I think. That's, a, I think, a reasonable place for it. So I'm going to just go to probably water first. And we're going to think about maybe, maybe another water pump there and another water pump there. So that's my main priority, really, for building there. So it'll be across... Like that. Let me just double check. So this is uh, planning where they could go. I mean, I could build them. But I don't know if it's necessary. So down and then along. I think that was as far as I'm going to go. Just so I know where the farm and things can go. So that's now in. Let's go ahead and go to food and a farmhouse. The farmhouse will dictate where we can actually farm. And it's quite a big area, isn't it? So I'm going to place it... Um, I think we'll place the farmhouse. I don't think I want to place it on here because maybe we'll have some other things going on. Um, I think there is okay for a nice farmhouse. We'll go for... It's taken over some land though, isn't it? Some land that's fertile. There is reasonable. And then... Actually, no, that is a terrible place, isn't it? Farmhouse. Probably going to have more water barrels there, so I don't want to place it there. I think just there. It's fine. The fields can go in here. Alright. So plant crops. Carrots, potatoes, and wheat. So carrot. It says, resource carrots, days to grow for hunger and nutrition. Potatoes. Taties. Days to grow six. And then wheat. Required building farmhouse, but I think you have to process it. I think potatoes you have to grill. Grill, yes. But turns uh, turns grilled potatoes, yeah. And then the grist mill is turned wheat into flour, and then you need to bakery. So we're not going to be planting. We're going to plant majority of ca this is going to be carrot. So there's our carrot, like that. I think carrot there. And potatoes will go there. Alright. Job done. That's, uh, I think, a reasonable amount. And... Homes. I think we need some homes. Housing. Lodge or lodge mirrored. The difference is where the entrance is. Um, the lodge themselves are classed as a solid structure. And solid structures like this one allow you to build things on top. So you have, like, multiple layers and levels. So it's actually quite a three-dimensional game. I'm going to place three homes, because that has... Uh, no, six homes. You have three inhabitants each. So there's 12 homes. It's going to run along there and along there. Don't need all the paths in between, but, you know... <laughs> I've not been accused of underdoing things before, for the most part. So we have berries, we have some logs. Um, what I'm going to do is cut trees, mark all this for tree cutting. Because obviously these trees here, well, they're still there. Logs, two of. Um... They're pine trees, I think, but they are dead and dried out. But it means they can get them. 
Whereas these ones, you can see you cut them and then you're left with the stump. Pine left over. Now, I don't actually know what happens with that. I'm really not too sure. Hmm. Oh, there you go. In the fields. So the fields are getting planted with carrots and potatoes. Good. I do think another water pump is probably the way to go. Oh, we've got one home. So we have dwellers in there now, which is good. And I think it would be not unreasonable to get... Hmm, what's the best thing? We've got basic needs. Water, yes. Food, yes. Building materials, yes. Homes, yes. All right. So... That's fine. We haven't got anything to do with metal. That's a scavenger flag where you have to you have to get metal from the ruins. I don't know if you can produce it later on or it requires different people, but we'll see. There's also a power system in the game where you have water wheels that provides generic units of power, which you then put into certain buildings. We'll get onto that in a future future video. And uh, oh, dams as well. So we will eventually dam right across this. Most likely have a. L mm, oh no! See if I put a. Uh, is it the levee there? If I put that across here and then put the dam across that, that's going to raise the water by one level and it's going to flood this entire thing. <laughs> so you have to be careful where you put things. Um, which is why eventually we may end up uh, changing some of this. But we shall see. Um, we have housing. We have this. What we need is probably like a nice recreational area. We've got a campfire and a rooftop terrace. Rooftop terrace. Look at that. That's cool. The problem is I need a way to get up to said terrace. And I just don't because in order to go and move further up for things like um, the wooden stairs, you need planks, which means cutting logs. And we don't have the technology to cut logs just yet. So, oh, there's hauling posts as well. Assist workers within district in carrying goods, greatly increasing their productivity. Worker bonus strength. The hauling post is good, and having it in, I think, sooner rather than later is probably a desirable thing. So, let's place it in there, and that will, yeah, increase their strength. So, job done. Obviously, we only have a certain number of jobs. Uh, we have 11 adults. And we sadly, two of them are still homeless because we've not yet built this. And as I said that, it's now built. So everybody has homes. And you can see we have hunger, thirst, sleep, and comfort is going up as well. So, good. These are obviously getting built as well. We have food on the go. We don't have a grill. Um, a grill will be needed eventually. What's that saying? Oh, the building is full of water. That's a good thing. Um, I'm going to place some more water tanks, I think. But I'll probably place one, two, three. Because the grill's going to go there, I think. Now, obviously, this is a very small colony. And we may end up, and probably will end up, redesigning things and moving on. Or what we learn from here. Start start a new thing. But there you are. You see we've got another ruin over there. Which is full of scrap metal. Which we can process. Lots of berries up here. Another ruin there. And you can see these ruins. Because they've got water. Because there's water near it. The, these ones have got like, you know, they're all broken, cracked concrete with some vines in them. But all the vines are dead and all the roots are withered. Whereas this, lush and green. <laughs> Even though it's ruins. There's another one there. I've just noticed this as well. So this goes up here. So if we removed... Ah! So we need to get water here somewhere. Most likely demolish this. Then all of this around the back would become fertile ground. Interesting. So a bit more storage, a bit more of the uh, hauling post. Oh, hauling posts require planks. I will demolish that. Uh, actually, no. I will pause that because, well, we can't do anything. Uh, low priority for that. Where is this one? Not so much. We... Hmm. What's the best course of action? Well, at this stage, we have... The ability to farm, we have gathering water, but if we get a dry spell, all of this is going to dry up. So I want to prevent that as much as possible. And the way I'm going to do that is by building a dam, because we're beavers. And this dam, I think, is going to run right across here. Like that. Obviously, we can't get to it, so I'm going to have to go to uh, probably demolish um, and demolish everything across there sadly but will allow us 
to then connect this up just run some pathing in you can see the pathing that <laughs> is missing but it's no big drama and then we'll be able to connect that up and then damming that now this is the very first basic stage of it later on we'll do a lot more advanced uh, water management so you've got like where is it we've got the levees we've got floodgates a so block water up to an adjustable height double floodgate triple floodgate an explosives factory and dynamite that's for removing land by the look of it so there you are over to our building once again just putting in the paths just so we get access to this the forecast is currently unknown eventually it will say dry season in x number of days so I'm just planning for that. And this is the very, as I said, the very basics for that one. We are collecting water. Currently got, looks to be three vats almost completely full. And those are now connected. So each one of these, it says, can't get all required materials. Um, but I think they can. I do think they're in range. They do get to there. I think I can build paths across it. I'm fairly confident. Yeah, so maybe that increases the range. It gets to there. Maybe it's just out. Maybe it's just out. I'm not sure. Mm. We shall see. No, they are bringing it to that. So hopefully that'll work. Good. Looks like the carrots are getting collected. And they'll bring it to this warehouse. I think we'll go to leisure and a campfire, and I want a campfire, and I'm going to place it just behind the lodge, because it's about the right size. And once again, pathing around the place like that. Why not? And this is an area where they will fulfil the social needs. So good. We have the carrots on the go. There's hunger and nutrition. We have our potatoes. Oh, we also have four. Population well-being, comfort, nutrition, sleep, thirst, hunger. And also probably social life as well. Because we're building this thing, which is satisfied social life. You've also got a rooftop terrace, which is social life, which I would very much like to place there, but I can't. And then a temple, which is spirituality, and a carousel, which requires 400 HP. Um, oh, there you go. The beavers are, beavers are happier than ever. So we're on five. So we've got comfort, nutrition, sleep, thirst, hunger. So, yeah, and social life, I think, will also be done as well. So not too bad at all. Still waiting for logs. Each one of these requires 20 logs. So you can see it very, you very quickly run out of logs. So I've already exhausted the majority of this. And about maybe... Hmm, about half of the right hand side. Naturally we've still got all of these to gather. Um, so it's not too much of a drama there. But we have to think about replanting. And that will require a forester. Sadly that is 60 science points. We don't have science. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to fix that problem? Well naturally we're going to do some research. That requires an inventor. Which turns where it just says research. Now weirdly you can see on the side of that. And you can even see on the side of that one there as well. This is where you can essentially put an input in for power but i don't think it needs it i think it's just it benefits from that if you have power i'm going to place it in here and run our pathing along like so and further back obviously there's little bits that i've missed like around here but that's not too much of a problem we can fill these with anything really I and mean, we've got like we've probably got little statues and things we can place or like little single little single mini lodges and stuff when we unlock them you can see when i click on that it says you need to unlock them so there's all manner of things we could we could place we have our very first dam so oh there we go three days we have three days in order to uh, get this thing sorted so i am going to high prioritize all of this however from experience i don't think we have the right amount of dam uh resources available i think we've got well, what have we got? Nine logs, eleven logs. Yeah, if the majority of our people stop what they were doing, then perhaps we'd be able to build this dam. But we shall see. But we are going to leave it there for now. That's been a little bit of Timberborn on the start of this new series. We have managed to get a very basic colony up and running with our... I'm going to call it... It's a district. It's a lodge. Um... 
we've got this here. We've got some housing. We've got, uh, you know, log piles and storage for food. Food is doing good. We've got some potatoes there, which are ready for harvest. I then will have to... Uh, what are we on for potatoes? We're on for uh, 23 potatoes. Oh, that's berries, sorry. Uh, we're out of berries, but we are getting carrots. And these do grow back, these berries. It does take a little while. But we'll get some uh, potatoes and grill those, and that'll fulfill those needs. Water is okay. Overall, a nice, decent start, and a fairly chill one this series, I think, hopefully. Um, until the dry season where this all may die off. But we shall see how we get on with that one. Either way, hope you have enjoyed this episode and for what it is, I guess, the series thus far. Comment in the comments and you have any tips, suggestions, advice for improving things, where to do stuff, etc. Would love to hear it and uh, get a discussion going there. Either way, hope you have enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.